So I've reviewed or used every single M1 Mac product that has come out onto the market. And the one thing that they have in common is the M1 chip, which makes it kind of confusing because they have the same chip, but all have different form factors. And I figure some of you are looking at one and might be considering the other. Now this is a buying guide and the goal of this video is to help you make the perfect pick. And, and if I do, I'd really appreciate if you hit the like button and you subscribe to the channel because I promise you I'll have more buying guides to come. The one thing I do want to get out of the way, performance between all of these devices are pretty much equal. Technically, the Pro 13, iMac, and Mac Mini can perform better because they have active cooling solutions, meaning there's fans inside to move heat away. But in order for you to actually see that, you have to really be pushing these computers. You gotta be doing stuff like rendering video for a long time or compiling code, and then you'll see like a nine to 10% performance difference. But overall, for most people, you're probably not gonna notice it. So let's start with the underdog, and that hands down goes to the Mac Mini, okay? $699, it gets you the M1, it's the most affordable out of the bunch, and you have active cooling. The other cool thing is the port variety. There's a lot more port variation on this guy compared to everything else. You buy an Air Pro, iPad, or iMac, you're stuck with just USB Type-C Thunderbolt. You buy this, not only do you get two Thunderbolt ports, but you also get two extra USB ports, HDMI, and an ethernet jack. Now there's one thing you have to consider if you're looking at the Mac Mini. It's only worth it if you have some of the accessories to go with it. Like if you already have a monitor at home, a mouse and a keyboard, then the value is there. If you have to go out and buy that stuff, then it gets pretty close to costing the same price point as the iMac. But here's the thing. I still think this is a better deal because a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse is something you don't replace that often. Like if I'm replacing a good 4K monitor, I can keep that thing for like 10 to 12 years. Whereas a iMac, it might start to slow down after year four or year five. My suggestion is if you have that stuff already, pick up the Mac Mini. And even if you don't, invest in a good display, mouse and keyboard, keep that. And then let's say three to five years down the road when you need to upgrade, you don't have to replace the entire package like you would on an iMac. All you have to do is replace the body. Now I'm not saying the iMac is a terrible deal. I think this is still a pretty good deal but you're stuck with a, an all-in-one package. Like you don't have the choice of the size of the display. Like you're stuck with 24 inches. Now don't get me wrong, 24 inches is okay, but it's still not the best size. Like me personally, I wanna be at 27 inches at the least. Anything smaller than that and I feel like is a bit too cramped for a desktop computer. But I'm not everyone, right? Like you might have worked on a 21 inch iMac previous to this, the 24 inch display is gonna feel like a, a nice big upgrade. I still think it's worth it. And, and for those of you out there who have like a multi-family dwelling where multiple people are using the computer, it's placed in the kitchen or the living room and you have a limited amount of space, then yeah, go for the iMac. That's where I think the value lies. But if you can pull it off, I still think the Mac mini is the one to go for. As for MacBooks, this is an easy one. I don't think anybody should buy the MacBook Pro 13. Not because it's a bad computer, it's absolutely fantastic. It's just that the extra money you have to spend on it, I don't think is worth it, you know? Yes, the speakers are slightly better, the display is a tiny bit brighter. Sure, it has active cooling, but for you to actually take an advantage of that, you're probably not in the market for this. You're probably better off waiting for the Pro 14 or 16 with an upgraded version of the M chip. The Air gets you 95% there. It's lighter, it still has really good battery life. You don't have the touch bar, you get actual function rows, and you have the same amount of ports. So if you're a student or anyone looking at these two, the easy answer is the MacBook Air. Now the iPad. And I feel like this is a device where there are so many feelings from so many different people. Let me put you in a situation and you tell me how you feel, okay? You have no computers, okay? You are buying your very first Mac, right? It's gonna do everything for you. Everything from processing your emails to browsing the net to maybe compiling code or whatever it is, right? 
which one of those devices on this table is going to do it the easiest. It's probably all of them except for the iPad Pro. And I feel like if you're looking at an iPad Pro just to browse the net and, and, and check your email, you're spending way too much money to do that because the iPad Air and the regular iPad is way more powerful enough to do the basic tasks. But the one main issue I still have with the iPad is it's multitasking. Like it's gotten better over the years with updates to iPad OS, but it's still poor, you know? Apple needs some sort of window system or something to make multitasking on this better. And I still consistently run into situations where I have to jump around hoops to make things work. Now I'm not saying this is a bad buy, I just think this is still very niche focused. Yes, you can edit video on this, Yes, you can do crazy stuff that you can do on the desktop computer, but when you do that stuff on this, you still have to go out of your way to make it work. Like for example, you hook up a USB type C drive to this. You don't know if it's gonna recognize it or not because it doesn't recognize every single one of them. Whereas on the Mac or the iMac, it still does. So here's what I gotta say about the iPad. You know why you're buying it, right? You're, you're probably some sort of artist or, or someone who's in music production because this has gotten better for that. And you want this as a secondary device. You want it so you can work in unison or separately at times away from your main computer. And if that's you, then get the iPad Pro. But if you're just buying the iPad Pro as a computer replacement, you're probably just doing regular everyday stuff like answering emails, browsing the net, and working in Microsoft Office. And if that's you, then save your money and just buy a regular iPad or iPad Air instead. Now specs. This is probably one question you guys want answered. What type of specs should you get on any of these devices? Well, I think no matter which one you choose, I think 512 gigabytes is the absolute least amount of storage space you want on any of these computers. The iMac, you can probably go a little bit lower because there's so many USB Type-C ports and you can always hook up an external drive since this is like staying on your desk the entire time. Same with the Mac Mini, but 512 is probably the lowest I'd go. As for RAM, it really depends. Like again, if you're doing basic stuff, eight gigabytes is fine, but I have a feeling, you know, three years down the road, four years down the road, it might start slowing down a bit when Mac OS gets updated again. My suggestion is the sweet spot. 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage on any of these devices. The only exception is the iPad. That really comes down to what you do with it. If you're just watching movies, then just get the lowest tier possible. But if you're gonna be that guy who is gonna really try to do everything on this, then yeah get a bigger hard drive on this, spend more money on the, the bigger hard drive to get the more RAM. And maybe if you can use this as I use a MacBook to like edit video and stuff, then you can really take advantage of that. I hope this was a very helpful video. And look, if you have any more questions or comments, let me know in the comment section down below. And I hope this helps you pick the perfect M1 Mac. Talk to you guys soon. See you in the next one. Thank you for watching.